Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Aaron Cohen from Goodman Campbell Brain and Spine. Thank you for joining us from an for another webcast from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. Uh, we appreciate the work of the Brain Aneurysm Foundation for the effort they do for the support of our dear patients. Tonight, uh, we are very happy to have with us Dr. Chris Ogilvy, uh, Chairman of Neurosurgery, as well as a well-known brain aneurysm surgeon from Harvard and Mass General Hospital. Um, Chris, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Okay. And I thought what we might do is, uh, first of all, thank the Brain Aneurysm Foundation and you, Aaron, for putting this together. I think it's an extremely powerful tool where I think we have now how many people on? 81 people already? Or 51 people at least, and more joining every minute, uh, to try to get more information out about brain aneurysms, about diagnosis, about treatment. And tonight we're going to talk about really what brain aneurysms are, and then a little bit about treatment. And uh, people are going to be writing in questions, and we can go from there. And also, uh, Chris, if you don't mind, I would like to introduce uh, Christine Buckley. Most of the, uh, her picture is just slightly uh, below me. And she really has done a tremendous job from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation to make this possible. Christine, thanks for all you guys do at the foundation, and thanks to you. Oh, thank Christine. you very much. Appreciate that. You're welcome, Chris. Uh, so we're going to start the evening with uh, having Dr. Ogilvy discuss uh, some general uh, discussions regarding management of brain aneurysms. I believe that's going to take about 15-20 minutes and we're going to jump in right away into answering your questions which I'm sure you guys would like to be answered as soon as possible. Christine is going to moderate the questions and sort of line them up and uh, uh, Chris and I are going to take turns and answer those questions. So Chris, uh, with that introduction, please go ahead. It's all yours. Thanks very much. And I, since there's such a, a wide variety of people coming from a wide variety of places, I thought we'd just start with a few slides, a few simple slides about brain aneurysms, um, you know, what they are, and then some things about what might be done about them. Uh, brain aneurysms uh, usually form at the bifurcation or division point of, of blood vessels in the brain. Um, there is probably, in a certain percentage of people, a predisposition for aneurysm formation. About 20 to 25 percent can run in families. However, to have one without a family history is also, um, you know, not unheard of, and about 80 percent of the people have that situation. There's probably a local flow in these arteries that, that predisposes to aneurysms forming, and then there's probably other factors such as smoking, uh, high blood pressure to a certain extent, although that's not well proven, certain connective tissue disorders that seem to be additive in the formation of brain aneurysms. Um, this is a picture of a brain aneurysm, a very simplified picture, just demonstrating that they typically occur where arteries divide. And this is a typical bubble that's shown, or weakness in the wall, at the site of, of an intracranial vessel, a blood vessel inside the head, where, a, where the arteries divide and an aneurysm will form. These, these typically form in adults. We do not see aneurysms very commonly in children at all. So they probably form as a combination of a predisposition to the aneurysm forming, and then over time, other elements, or just the element of time, because they're more commonly seen in adults, anywhere from 20 to, to 20 to 80 years old. They typically occur around the base of the brain in what's called the circle of Willis, which isn't really a circle at all, but a connection of the arteries at the base of the brain. And this is a slide showing the brain turned upside down from what you might think. It's taken out of the head and looked at from the base of the brain up. And what we see are the arteries that enter the brain. There's uh, really four major arteries that enter the brain. And they do connect to each other inside the head. And at these connecting points around what I'm outlining, which is called the circle of Willis, pardon me, the circle of Willis is where brain aneurysms can occur. And here an artist has shown aneurysms occurring in common locations where arteries divide. And as you can see, they're many times not very large at all, um, uh, but can occur around the base of the brain in this connection of arteries, which is called the circle of Willis. And as I say, being from Boston, we tend to refer to this as the rotary of Willis, because it's not a true circle at all, but a communication of arteries that we see here in our traffic. Here's a picture, and this is the, the perplexing thing about aneurysms. This is a picture 
of a brain artery 